All right, greetings, math people. Uh, today, what we have in store for you is a calculator comparison. So I have a TI Inspire, I believe it's a TI Inspire CX2 CAS calculator and an HP Prime. And these are uh, calculators on the same level. So we know there's, there's multiple levels of, of calculators. Um, I, a lot of people are very familiar with the, the TI series, so it's, it's not like comparing a TI-83 to a TI-89. So both of these calculators uh, are on equal level, uh, even in price. I just looked at their, their pricing on Amazon before starting this video. Uh, the Prime was going for 145 and the Inspire was going for 140 So they're very comparison uh, calculators. You know, in my encounters, uh, most of the students I see uh, have TI calculators, whether it be an Inspire or something else. Um, I do every now and then see students, particularly students from, from Asian countries that have Casio calculators. I have yet to meet uh, a student that had an HP Prime. And so uh, this is not a calculator I, I, I see a lot of, uh, perhaps in different parts of the United States and, and maybe in other countries, uh, the HP Prime is a more prevalent calculator. Uh, but in my everyday scenes, I've yet to see a student uh, have an HP Prime calculator. So let's see if that's a problem. Uh, let's see if the HP Prime is a great calculator or not. So again, we're just gonna do a quick comparison of these two calculators. Again, this is the TI Inspired as you see in blue, and this is the HP Prime uh, in black. And we're just gonna kind of compare size, look, location of buttons, uh, and those type of things, and, and a few basic operations uh, we would do in, in a basic Cal 1 class and see uh, which one comes out on top. All right, so let's go ahead and have at it. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is just analyze the size of these calculator. Uh, they're fairly comparable in size. Uh, the Inspire is a little bit bigger. So if I, if I put these next to each other, uh, you can see the Inspire uh, is slightly longer and about the equal, about they're about equal size uh, in width. Um, so now let me open them. And to me, this is a pretty important thing. Uh, the ease in which uh, you can take the calculator out of the cover. Uh, that's very important to me. So here is the prime to see how easy it is to take it out of the cover. Uh, that was nice and easy. Uh, there's a look at the prime. We'll put it under the document camera in a second. Uh, let's take the Inspire out of the case. That was fairly easy too. And uh, there's a look at the Inspire and we'll put that under the document camera. Now I, I will say, you know, initially the Inspire was pretty difficult to get out the case. I guess over time it's, it's become, it's become easier, but it, at first it was a pretty difficult endeavor to, to release uh, the calculator from its case. I, I will have to admit, I never had that issue with the HP Prime. So on, on that little uh, characteristic, I'm gonna give the HP Prime uh, the nudge there because trust me, there's many days and I, you know, I'm a fairly strong individual where I had to really fight uh, to get the Inspire uh, out of his case. All right, so let's transfer to the document camera and just get a look at these calculators side by side. So here you can see the Inspire, excuse me, here you can see the Prime and here you can see the Inspire. And albeit the Inspire is a bigger calculator, um, you can see that the Prime has a bigger screen. And so if, uh, that's, that's the thing that you like. The Prime has a bigger screen. If you look at buttons, you'll see the Inspire has a lot more buttons. And in fact, uh, a neat feature the Inspire has is it gives the letters their own uh, individual buttons. And on the Prime uh, to get letters, you have to hit this this orange alpha button and then you'll see the, the letters of the alphabet in orange here. And that's how it is on a lot of calculators, but the Inspire uh, decided to uh, put, the, put the letters with their own buttons. And also, as you look at these, uh, you'll notice that the HP Prime, uh, the buttons are uh, bigger uh, than the buttons on the Inspire. 
However, albeit there's a different size in buttons, you know, uh, utilizing both calculators, uh, I haven't experienced a one's uh, buttons are better than the other. So even though they're different size, even though the Inspire's buttons are smaller, uh, they still work just as fine as the buttons on the Prime. So I, I didn't see any, I have, there's no um, advantage for either calculator based on button size, uh, at least in my opinion. All right, so now let's look at powering these babies on and now, just just a short study so at the end of my college career i did an intern uh, with gte um, this was in the year 2000 and gte was working on something called super pages and so if you're old enough to remember there was a time when you would get yellow pages in the mail and the yellow pages were a a directory of like all you know surrounding businesses if you will and so what gte was working on at the time was something called Super Pages, uh, which was a, a novel idea. It was an online um, yellow pages uh, called Super Pages. Uh, maybe it was like the precursor to Google, I don't know. And, and it's also interesting, uh, this year, uh, that year when I was working there in, in Waltham, Virginia at the GTE Labs, it's the same year Verizon was born. So I forget the company GTE merged with, but GTE, you know, merged with, uh, I don't want to speculate on a company. I, I, so I was about to say a company name, I think it is, but I don't want to speculate and be wrong. Uh, but they emerged with a company. It may have been more than one company in form, Verizon. You know, I remember the ceremony, uh, people wearing construction hats and uh, they were uh, putting their fingers like this for Verizon. It was, a, it was a pretty big thing. But I mentioned that because when we were working on super pages, I myself and the people on my team were, were working on the coding in, in HTML, but there were also the psychologists. And what they would do is they would bring uh, customers in and doing market research. And they would bring the customers in and the customers, they would just watch them go through the website and ask some questions. Was it easy to do this? How easy was it to do this? Was this difficult to find? Did you even see that button that does this? And so from there I learned, you know, as far as creating uh, web pages, like the location of where you put a certain button or, or a certain entry is pretty important because if you put it a certain way, a certain place, a lot of people will not even recognize it. And so the same thing with these calculators. So where certain things are positioned is quite important. So the on button is on two different locations on these calculators. On the Inspire, it's in the top right. And on the Prime, it's in the bottom left. I think a more natural, in my opinion, a more natural location for the on button uh, would be uh, top right. But bottom left doesn't feel unnatural. So really, in my opinion, I, I like the location of the on button on the Inspire, but it's not that big of an advantage over the Prime. So let's go ahead and power both these on. And they both came on fairly quickly. Uh, you may notice the, the Prime popped up a little bit earlier than the Inspire, but, but that's, that's, that's no big deal uh, in my opinion. Now, if you notice, uh, the prime goes straight to the calculating screen and the inspire gives you options to set things up and so i'm going to set the inspire on on how you would basically need it for things you would do in like a cal one class so let me get my specs so i can look at this and so uh, you would want to have I'll put no here you'd want to add a calculator and from there, you would also want to have a graphing page. And so here I got a graphing page uh, and here I got a calculator. Now, uh, you see the time it took me to, to set that up. It didn't take a terrible amount of time, but it did take some time to set it up. Uh, to me, the Prime has an advantage on this because the Prime goes straight to just a regular calculating page. So this is the page where I can just do, you know, normal calculations. 
be it as it may. And if I need to grab something, I'll hit this apps uh, key and I'll hit function. If I wanna do uh, uh, something like uh, polar or parametric or something like that, I'll hit advanced graphing, but I'll just hit function and I'll type in some functions. So I'll just leave the function that's already typed in and to see the graph, I'll just hit plot and I can do whatever I wanna do with the graph. And once I'm done with the graph, I can just escape and I'm back to the, to the regular calculator. And of course on the end part, you see I had to uh, do this, the setup I did. And you know, if I go, I wanna grab something. So I gotta go to that graphing page and then type some function in. So let me type in the same function uh, I had on the Inspire just for a quick comparison. Uh, so let me go back to what that function was, x squared minus 2x minus 10. So let me type that here, x squared uh, minus 2x minus 10. Now, the benefit of the Inspire when you are in graphing mode, you just type the function in and hit enter. And then there you're looking at the graph. And you remember uh, on the prime, I had to type the function in and then hit plot. And here, once I just hit enter on the function, I'm, I'm right there to the graph. And if you look at, at both screens, and let me take a look to see how, if the lighting is not, so it looks like looking at the feed from the camera, that it's not showing the AP Prime's uh, graph very, very clearly uh, uh, from the lighting. It's showing the Inspire's graph uh, pretty, pretty nice from the lighting, actually. But uh, me looking, so it may be difficult for you to see from the feed uh, from the camera. I think that's a little bit better there. But just me looking, uh, the in, the graph of on the Inspire is is superior to the graph on on the Prime. It's not by a great deal, but the graph on the Inspire does indeed look better uh, than how the graph looks looks on the Prime. So just uh, the look of the graph, uh, it's it's better on the Inspire uh, than it is on the Prime. All right, let's look at doing some some just basic things we do with graphs. Uh, like one thing would be, you know, if we're graphing the derivative of a function uh, to look at the value of the x-intercepts, uh, maybe to determine like a relative min or a max or something like that. So let's look at finding the zeros of the graphs on both calculators. Uh, let me begin with the, the Inspire. So I'm going to find the zero on the graph. So to do so, I'm going to hit Menu. I'm going to go to Analyze Graph. And I'm going to go to Zero. And it's gonna have me a left bound, so I'm just gonna move it, you know, somewhere to the left of this x-intercept. Press down, and then I'm gonna move, oh, I don't think it took it. Uh, press down, and then, there we go. And then I'm gonna move it to the right, and press down, and then you can see I have a zero at negative 2.32. So similar process on the Inspire, excuse me, on, on the Prime, I keep getting these calculations mixed up. Let's say I wanna find a zero. So I'm gonna hit this menu button here and hit this button and root, which is the same thing as a zero, as you know. And notice, I didn't have to do uh, any movement. It gave me the number right there, negative 2.316. So it gives roots cl uh, quicker. Now, of course, what you will say is, well, this function has two roots. So you need this to, to determine which root you want. But what the prime does is, wherever the cursor is currently located, whichever root it's closest to, it's just gonna take that root. So if I wanted, if I wanted this root, I just need to move the cursor, you know, just a little bit closer uh, to that root than the other root. And then I can do the same thing root and bam there's the answer that quick so i think it's fairly obvious in terms of finding uh x intercepts uh, the inspire is is superior excuse me i keep getting the, these names of these calculators mixed up the hp prime uh, is superior to the inspire uh, you don't have to do that lower bound upper bound stuff just have a cursor fairly close to the point and it's going to automatically tell you uh, what that point is all right, let's look at calculations. Uh, let's uh, do a numerical derivative and a definite integral and see how that works. So if I wanna go back to just doing cap, uh, 
calculations, I'll just hit escape on the prime and I'm back to the regular calculating page. And on the Inspire, let me go to my calculator tab. All right, so let's do a numerical derivative. And this time, let me start on the prime. So on the prime, uh, there's a key here that has like all different functions, fraction bar, exponents, roots, uh, limits, and of course, uh, derivatives and a definite integral. So let's do a derivative. So um, let's type some function in. So let's say a basic function. Let's say like uh, x squared minus 2x. And also one thing to mention on the prime, so it has just one button for your variable and it says xt theta n. And that's like whether you're, uh, you know, doing functions regular Cartesian functions or parametric functions or, or, or polar functions or or sequences, you have those different variables. But on the Inspire, you just have, you know, your regular letters, you can choose any letter alphabet you want. So uh, let's say I want to evaluate uh, this derivative uh, when x is equal uh, to 10. So I think that's going to equal 18. All right. So that's how it works on the prime. Let's do it on the Inspire. So the Inspire has a very similar button. It's here that has all the stuff, uh, uh, the fraction bar and all that. Uh, you may notice, so let me pull both those at, up at the same time. You may notice, uh, at least by default, and there, there may be a way for me to enlarge the way this looks, but just the default settings, uh, the primes is is bigger than the inspires, uh, which maybe for a young kid doesn't mean anything, but for me it means everything because uh, I'm at the age where it's difficult to see small things. So uh, that's why while I'm doing this right now, I have these glasses on just to be able to see the screen and the buttons. Uh, so to me, that's a benefit of the prime of just a bigger screen. But anyway, let's go ahead and do that derivative on the inspire. And we'll do the same function, uh, which is uh, x squared uh, minus 2x, so d by dx of x squared minus 2x. And now to do a numerical derivative, I'm gonna do the little bar, control, put the bar there, the vertical bar, and then I'm gonna put x equals 10. And in series C, I, of course, I get the same value. Um, well, I think, again, the edge is going to the prime on the fact that I just typed the function and up here and on the bottom, I just type X equals 10 and got my answer. On the Inspire, you know, I typed the function. I had to do a couple of things to get this vertical bar and then uh, X equals 10. Uh, so to, to me, that fact, uh, the, the prime was better again. And I just noticed something else. I was looking at these calculators, something I want to talk about that I haven't yet. And I don't know how, how easy this this to see, but a big problem students have sometimes uh, when doing, you know, trig evaluations or, or, or calculations is making sure the calculator is in the proper setting, whether that uh, setting is, is radians or degrees. You know, normally, of course, it'll be radians for a calculus student. Sometimes for a pre-calculus student, uh, they'll need it to be in degrees. And if you look at the screens, both of them tell you what the rating, what, what setting it is, which is a good thing, because just, you know, if you're familiar with the TI-84, uh, you have no idea, you know, what setting you're in until you hit the mode button. So sometimes you may do a calculation, it doesn't seem right, then you hit mode and say, oh, I was in the wrong setting, whether it was degrees or radians. Well, both these tell you up, up front. And so here you can see on here on the Inspire, it says RAD for radians. And here you can see on the prime, it has a little angle symbol uh, and a pi uh, for radians. So that pi represents radians. It's, it's a little smaller uh, on the prime. It's, it's a little more robust on the Inspire. So to me, the Inspire has an edge. You can clearly see that, okay, my, my calculator's in radians. Uh, on the prime, it's a little bit smaller. And you know maybe if you're not thinking too much, just to say an angle in pi, even though you think of ratings and think of an angle in terms of pi, you may not, not may not see may not uh, uh, notice that. So I think just on that little 
little characteristic. I give the Inspire um, uh, the advantage. So, all right, so let's look at doing a numerical, excuse me, a definite integral. So uh, let's start on the, the Inspire this time. So same button that we used to get our, our derivative. And so now we're gonna do a definite integral. Oops, I don't know what I was doing. Let me go back. All right, we'll do a definite integral and let's just integrate something from zero to one. Um, let's integrate X cubed from zero to one. Oops, what did I push? I'm sorry, uh, let's go back. So let's, let's integrate uh, the function, just the simple function X cubed uh, from zero to one. dx. All right, so we get one fourth there. That's fairly basic. It wasn't a lot to that. Uh, let's try it on the prime. Again, we'll hit the same button and we'll go from zero to one. And if you know, this is just a slight thing. Uh, if you notice when I was doing the inspire, when I pulled up the integral symbol, so let me pull it back up. And when I hit the zero and went up, it went to the function. On the prime, when I did it and hit zero and went up, it went up to the other limit. I personally prefer to go to the other limit. Let me put my limits in and then go to the function. Uh, this one goes up. I mean, I could have just went up from the function to the other limit, but this one goes up from the lower limit to the function, then to the upper limit. I think it's better that the prime goes from the lower limit to the upper limit. All right, but let me type the function in. So the function is going to be x cubed dx. And of course we'll get the same answer, uh, one fourth. So on, on that respect, other than the little thing of it going from the lower limit, uh, to the upper limit on the prime. I think they were basically the same as far as doing a definite integral. All right, so we're gonna stop there. And so maybe for some people, this was an introduction to the HP prime, maybe a calculator you never even thought of. It's, 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 a, it's a very nice uh, calculator. So I stated to you my opinion, the things I thought one calculator was better than the other at, and the things I thought they were practically equal at. And so that is our calculator comparison and we will see you next time.